Hi boys and girls, welcome to art class. Today we are finishing our color wheel umbrellas that we started last time. We did this much last time, this is where we're headed. If you didn't get to do it, go to Schoology and see if you can get caught up. So today we'll be using the good patterns for this project and the color wheel. Last time we started with the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Today we'll go on to the secondary colors, orange, green goes between yellow and blue, and then purple is in that last little space. Always getting those colors in the correct order. So I'm going to pick out a good pattern for my orange space. I think I'll go with these little curls. I think I'll pick the curls. Now I want you to notice how I'm putting the crayon on my paper, very thick and bold. I am going to be painting on top of the crayon. And if I put the crayon on nice and strong and thick, it's going to show up better when I put the paint on, uh, on it in just a little bit. So take a look as I finish my crayon patterns on my umbrella using the secondary colors. Moving on to the raincoat and the boots and the pants. So we're going to use a little bit of paint to do the raincoat in just a bit. For the pants and the rain boots, we'll be using crayon. So you may color the pants and the rain boots with any color of crayon that you would like. So let's talk about the painting part of this lesson. If you are at home and you do not have watercolor paint, well, you know what, I think this project would be great if you just finish it off with crayons. So you put the patterns on first, nice and dark and heavy and bold, but you could use the same color to color in the white spaces lightly with your crayons if you don't have watercolor paint. That looks pretty nice. So kids at school will be using the liquid watercolor paint and right now I want to show you how to do that. First you're going to dip your paintbrush into the color that you want to start with and always wipe it on the side of the cup. Always wipe that brush on the side of the cup that keeps it from dripping all over your project. So always wipe the brush on the side of the cup. Hold it like a pencil. Put your fingers on the gripper and hold it straight and tall like a pencil and try painting with the tip of the paintbrush. That is going to help you control it a little bit better than if you paint with the side of the brush. Now very important that you rinse your brush out between colors so that you don't get the paints all mixed up. I'm moving on to orange, wiping on the side of the cup. Oh good, and then I'm going to move over to my umbrella and just brush right on top of the crayon, letting that crayon shine through. It's called a crayon resist. Crayon resist is what this technique is called. So if I paint with the tip of the brush, I can stay in the lines a little bit better, but of course, no one's perfect. If you get out of the lines a little bit, no worries, just keep on going.
Well, you can paint the raincoat with any color that you would like in any way that you would like. Hopefully you are pausing the video when you need extra time to get caught up. I want to give you just a few ideas of how to finish your project off. You could paint the rain puddle, the little puddle under the feet, or you could use crayons or markers. Uh, you could also draw raindrops in the background with your crayons. Raindrops are basically like little teardrop shapes. If you wanted to add some action, you could draw little lines leading to the teardrops to look like rain that's falling. Now, the kids at school, we're going to be splatter painting for those of you who would like, splatter painting the background with some rain, and we're going to add a rainbow. So kids at home, of course, you could do those things as well using your markers and crayons. Isn't it cool how a rainbow is just like a color wheel? It's in color wheel order. I think that's so neat. So if you're at home, please send me a photo so that I can give you a grade on this project. Have a great day. Thank you.